Cretan's here with all his games, tech new spark and bright flames, straight from consoles to your ears, geeking out with tech and cheers, a row has got an anime dream, big titty goth chicks supreme, dressed in black they catch his eye from the screen, they never lie, it's reading and entertainment time. Podcast crew, simply sublime, geek and gamer niche and more. Tune in, get ready to explore. Connor's world, oh what a sight. Warhammer battles late at night. Cyberpunk and Shadow Run. Stories told, the fun's begun. Oh, all together, trio strong. Podcast vibes, we sing this song. Tech and tales and games galore. Join us now, come through the door. Hello and welcome to the Reading Entertainment Podcast, episode 460 for... Oh, it's it's September 1st, 2024. My name is Nathan Reed Spruth. Joining me this week, we have Andrew Rowe McFain. So you made, a, you made an AI-generated intro. Yes. That's that, uh, and and of my the, the corniest fucking lyrics that I think I've ever heard in my life. Uh, so I just put in like little thing, like because you only have two hundred characters. Chat GPT, right? No, I, I did Suno. I did the. Oh, I I've never actually used that, so it like it makes up the lyrics too. Yeah, it mm-hmm. makes up all the lyrics for you. Oh, and I put in I put in little things, so I put in Aroa likes anime and big titty goth girls. Okay. And uh, Connor likes uh, Connor likes Cyberpunk and Shadowrun, Shadowrun and Warhammer. And you only have two hundred characters to describe what the song is about. What you got to do is ask ChatGPT to describe the song you want to hear in two hundred and fifty characters or less for you. That I could do Make that. Your AI write your prompts. You can also you can also go into Suno and. Uh, have your own lyrics, and I, it'll, see, I, I that, thought that I was. That. I thought that was what you you had done is is pumped it into ChatGPT and then fed the lyrics directly into Suno. But no, that's... you can do that. Uh, but also, I checked out the the terms of service for Suno, and mm-hmm. you can use if you have one of their plans, their pro or premium plans you can use it commercially as long as you created those songs while on that plan so i just i'm just spending ten dollars a month and my idea is i'm just gonna have a different song every week (laughs) and just throw in random and i was like okay first one's gonna be barbershop quartet okay and uh then we're just gonna move on from there and every week it'll be a different song yeah i'm excited all right yeah, as long as I don't have to hear that to one again. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like it the, you don't like the big titty goth girls. I genuinely uh, had to bite my wrist to keep from laughing out loud when I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was genuinely funny, but almost everything else made me want to, uh, made me want to suffocate myself with a with a grocery bag. We're we're so. also joined by Connor the Cyberpunk Monk, uh, Bash. But I I just wanted to say that. Uh, Last month, I wasn't able to watch it because I was I was busy, but there is a uh, there's a barbershop quartet like competition that happens every year, and they were streaming it, and I wasn't able to to pay to watch it because and I really wanted to. I would not pay to see that, but no fucking around. I would one hundred percent watch that. They have they they air a bunch of the stuff on YouTube. So you could you could go and watch a lot of it on YouTube, and they're they're releasing it sporadically, I believe. So, uh, yeah, and it was in Ohio, and I was like, man, I have a friend in Ohio. I would totally just, if I knew about it earlier, I probably would have actually planned to go to Ohio and go to the barbershop quartet, uh, competition because it's it's dumb, but I love that type of music. Anyway, uh. So so where can we find you guys? Is is website still available? It should be. Okay, I hope good. so. Cuz I haven't checked in a while. Yeah, I haven't I haven't been on here in a month or so because uh I've been traveling and stuff. And uh what games have you played this week, Aroa? Um 
What well, games have you played this month? Yeah, last last month. What games did you play last month? Uh, the new WoW expansion came out, so I've been playing quite a bit of that. How um, is it? It's great. Good. Um, I I I can safely say they did a great job, and I'm enjoying every moment of it. Um, also played a lot of uh, a game called Plate Up. Which, uh, you, you know, overcooked. Yeah, I've seen yeah. I've seen played up. I think. Okay, because it's it's just overcooked, but a lot more, uh, a lot a lot more like speedrunner focused, I guess, and a lot more technical in, in some ways. Like there, there's, it's it's much more mechanically diverse than than overcooked. Uh, which is more of like a like a party game type thing, um, I would say. Like obviously, it, it gets difficult, but played up like there. It's it's a rogue light version of that, and like there are automation features where like you can you can buy conveyor belts and shit. Like it's 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 a very very interesting game. Um, been playing that with uh with Katie a lot. Uh and I also uh do, do you know about Sandbox, which is essentially Gary's Mod 2. Oh, I know what a Sandbox is, but I didn't I I've been out of the loop. What is what is Sandbox the game? So, uh Gary Newman, the guy who made Gary's Mod, uh has been and also the guy who owns face punch who makes rust uh the, his next thing has been sandbox uh and he's been putting out like bits and pieces of it over the past what feel it what, what feels like and may actually be the last decade um and it's sort of the the same the same kind of thing is like uh little big planet uh which i guess Nowadays, you really could just compare it to like Roblox or Fortnite, where it's more of a platform than a game in and of itself. Um, it uses the new source engine that uh, Half Life Alex used, uh, and it's it, it's an impressive thing that it exists, and that the editor is as complex as it is. Uh, while still being pretty easy to use. However, with it being so limited still, because you can only you, you could only get into it if you went through a few very specific hoops. Um, it, it's not got a lot of content that's worth playing and the content that is there that's that's kind of worth playing is uh, it's rough to say the least. So, but I am, I am hopeful and excited to see where that goes because I would, uh, I would very much like to see another, another, uh, platform sort of game that is a, that is a worthwhile successor to, uh, Gary's mod. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. I liked Gary's mod. Um, I played when it first came, I haven't really done it, but I played it when it first came out. When it was literally just like a sandbox, and yeah, then I I logged in. I was like, all right, I'm gonna play this all the time. And then like four years later, I uh, I loaded it up and I was like, what are all these modules and stuff here for? This is weird. <laughs> uh, so I... yeah, it was. Uh, I like I like Gary's one, but that's cool. Is is it the same where you can like, literally just like, all right, I want to make a car. But I'm gonna summon this dumpster and just put like wheels on it. It's more like I I want to make a car, so I'm going to drag these vehicle assets into what is what essentially looks like the Unity editor. Like <laughs> it it is it is very much a a, a simplified game engine on its own. Like it's it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I've been I've been reading his his dev logs over the years, 
and like he he's essentially like like I say he's made a game engine within the source engine and like it's you can you can like load new versions of a level in real time because the the worlds are all stored just in big json files interesting like which also means that the file size is super small like it's i don't even know i don't even know how to describe everything because it's it's literally like a game engine on a, in and of itself. Yeah, I looked for it. It's not available on Steam. It so you have to go on to the Face Punch website, uh, log in to your Steam account, and then go to one of the specific blo- this, this one specific blog post where he talks about opening it up for beta access, and you have to click a link, and then you see a picture of a guy with a caption uh, that says that you have beta access now, and then it's just in your Steam library. Interesting. I might I might do that, because there is another game called Sandbox, uh, which is not the same game. No, this is S, and then an ampersand, and then box. Oh, oh, and box. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Did you play anything else? Any idle games? Any... Game oh, well, big titty golf course. girls. Of course. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. But, you know, uh, I've already talked for like 10 minutes, so. That's all right. And uh, we're going to move on to Connor. What games have you played that are worth mentioning? I'm going to go through the quick list, and then I got a, a short little unfortunate rant. Uh, I've been playing a little bit of Helldivers 2, and boy, does that game sure feel like it's going through its death throes right now. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, I've finally decided that Final Fantasy XII is going to be the game that I play for like 15 minutes before bed each night, mm-hmm. and that's been going all right. Oh well, well I then, think what you mean, I think what you mean is the game's going to play itself for about 15 minutes. I'm going to watch the game play itself for 15 minutes <laughs> yeah. or so each night before bed. Which, honestly, as far as like games to do that with, if I don't have to haul my ass to my computer and like, I think portable is going to be the right call for this. Anyways, yeah. the game that I want to talk about is I recently finished Metal Gear Solid Five. I've hundred percented it, which is in itself a pretty good achievement. Holy shit! Fuck yeah, homie! Congratulations! Uh, I have been like, okay, I love stealth games. Why don't I play more stealth games? I'm going to go back and play some stealth games that I love. I downloaded Blacklist on my Steam Deck, and boy, do you ever go back to a game that you remember really loving and just. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, Splinter, Splinter. In case anybody doesn't know, it's Splinter Cell Blacklist is what he's talking about, and the game was not made um, with as much stealth in mind as the other Splinter Cell games. Yeah, and you could totally be like passive stealth. I know I've I've played through this game like start to finish more than once, and trying to do it this time around and realizing just. I'm going to call it Ubisoft bloat. How much? Oh, you got to hide behind cover. Otherwise, you're basically detected immediately. Oh, you got to follow our exact specific path. It's like, that's not the thing that made these games cool back in the day. Waiting around for somebody to hit the exact right path is not the, like, what, what am I trying to say here? It's just like, there's more to a stealth game than that. I want to be in a sandbox that I could experiment with. I have gadgets that should be cool. And it's not. Yeah. So uh, shame on you, Blacklist. I'm going to keep on looking for stealth games because now now that I've got this itch, boy, I'm looking for something to scratch it again. Do I just play Metal Gear Solid Five again? Is that uh, is that what happens now? I mean, there's, there's other stealth. We could play Payday 3. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that notably, that uh, Splinter Cell Blacklist is also the only Splinter Cell game that doesn't have Michael Ironside. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just say that marks it down a full, like, if it was an A, it's getting a B minimum. Well, well, and, and here's the problem with that, is I, I was mad that he wasn't in the game, because a lot of times they'll be like, oh, we just need a new voice actor. But he had, like, throat cancer. Yeah, he was battling cancer in his lung, uh, yeah, uh, throat, I think, actually. Yeah. Which you and, can't voice act when that's happening. And so I was like, all right, fine, <laughs> Now, don't get get me wrong. Ubisoft has gone, like, at least for over a decade now, where they do full body capture when they're doing the recording and stuff like that. Michael Ironside is not Sam Fisher. They just 
I, I've got a lot of respect for the man, but he's a little bit round, or was, whatever. Uh, I, I want to see this sequ- I, I like. I want a good stealth game, and I, I think Metal Gear Solid Five has ruined stealth games for me. There's never going to be something that matches up to that level. And I, I say never. I, got, I hope there will be, but what big shoes to fill, man. That, that's all I wanted to say about this whole experience was I, I've been ruined by this one game, and I, unfortunately it's with a genre that I love. I'm sure they'll find. I, I'm sure they'll make some more stealth games that you like. Uh, I I think that stealth games are kind of difficult because it's a pretty niche uh, product where mm-hmm. a lot of people just want to go in and go guns do blazing. the action stuff. Yeah. yeah, I am hopeful for that Ghosts of Tsushima game. Uh, my brother, who's a person whose opinions I respect, said that he liked it quite a bit. I'm worried that it's a little bit too Dark Soulsy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I could see that. My I... understanding is that that game just kind of plays like a like an interactive uh, Kira Kurosawa film, which I'm totally down with. I just I'm not sure if that's the stealth thing that I'm looking for. No, I don't. I don't think it. it I think it has very light stealth elements, yeah. if anything. But it looks so pretty. So yeah, t- tune does. in. Like I don't know the next month or so when I inevitably complain about other stealth games i'm sure i'm gonna go and crack that can why don't you try out death stranding uh no (laughs) yeah why why don't you try out the walking simulator don't get me wrong i will play the fuck out of death stranding someday when like i'm retired and i have time to fuck around and waste walking (laughs) across the country i'm very interested in that game and everything i see about it makes me go i am so confused and intrigued but i myself I got shit to do, man. I yeah, I I I have never been interested in that game. I think I got it for free on Epic, so I could play it whenever I want, and that it has not happened. And Being, maybe that day I, it'll come. I want to. I, I I'm very much in the. God, I really want to play it, but it's like there are so many other things that I could play and like that game ain't going anywhere. Yeah. Like I'll play a Kojima game. I'm very fine with being confused and just being like, all right, I guess this is happening now, but death stranding. Have you all ever seen any game? Like, like it's so well, extra I... in the sense of like, what is actually going on right now? Yeah. I, I played it. I played it for a good, uh, probably like five hours. Um, and then I was like, wow, is this ever going to get anywhere? And got distracted by something else. And literally anything else. You're like, man, I would yeah. rather just play this idle game. I will actually yeah. go and walk around a bit instead. No. Yeah. A row is stranding. <laughs> I'm just going to start like handing a row of boxes for him to deliver. Be like, hey, walk this across town for me. It's hey, just like know- Death Stranding. It's it's funny that you say that because like I I every once in a while I get the I get the inkling for that sort of gameplay of it and then I'm like I could play Death Stranding but I could also just like play Euro Truck Simulator or Elite Dangerous like and those are far more engaging That's to be true. honest yeah um and so did you, were there any other games you played that that are worth mentioning Cyberpunk I know you played some Jackbox Party Pack. I've been playing some Jackpox. I got a, a lady friend who fell in love with those games, so I've been particularly nostalgic with those. Um, oh, Space Station why. 13? I don't know, man. Like, it's, it's, it's the same thing it's been since 2004. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're, they're coming out with uh, Space Station 14. Uh, I think I am <laughs> on the beta. I haven't played that yet, though. Yep. I, I have it on Steam, but I haven't launched it because it, it was included in one of those... Uh, like Steam Next demo things, mm-hmm. and I uh, like the Next Fest, and I I grabbed it, but I haven't actually played it. But it's in beta. It's not it's not fully complete yet. I mean, anyway, it's been the same game since two thousand four. I'm sure it's not. Anyways, uh, so yeah, tune in uh, next week when we all spend some time playing Space Station fourteen. You know, you want to play with the Red Aurora? When when I when uh... I actually play games because. The, the games I played this week. First off, you can find me at Reet and Everywhere. I've been kind of away from everything for the last month, uh, but I am going to be back on Twitch tomorrow, the uh, 2nd of September, Labor Day, 6 p.m. Pacific time to 9 p.m. Pacific time, uh, playing some Labor more video Day. games. Labor Day. 
I I haven't played like anything. I, I went to Australia and I didn't really play any games when I was in Australia. I took my Steam Deck, but I didn't I didn't play any games. I did go there was a place called the Arcade that was uh like a fifteen minute bus ride from where I was at. And I went into the arcade and by arcade they mean tiny mall without an arcade. Oh. Yeah, so I was like, oh, okay, great. Uh, so I didn't do that. I, I did go to the casino and play some slots and lose some money. Um, but other than that, I haven't really played games. And then I was like, okay, I'm coming back. I'm going to be back. And then immediately after I got back from vacation, I had to go on a work trip. And I don't know exactly how many miles I have driven for work, but... I get 67 cents a mile for, you know, each mile driven for work. And I got $1,150 Ooh. for the amount that I drove. <laughs> Good payday. So, so something like 1,500 miles have been driven on my car in the last month. And most of that in one week. Uh, and then we also had to do three refreshes last week where we go to a clinic and take out all the computers and put in new computers. Um, so I worked a 13 hour day and a 17 hour day last week. So those were long days, uh, but also combine that with driving around Oregon because we had to install new phones. And so I literally drove like 1500 miles to install phones because we don't trust the staff there to do, to install the phones themselves. And I wouldn't trust the staff to do that either. And my brain was like, why are we doing this? And I know why we were doing it. So we're doing it for interpreters. So when somebody comes in and they speak Spanish um, and you know they don't speak English very well, we call an interpreter so we can walk them through the, the procedures and stuff. Um, but I was like, why are we like, why do we need, there was a hard deadline that we had to get that done at the end of August. And we were given like three weeks or four weeks for my, for, for all of the clinics, all 50 something clinics to get upgraded. And so I, I finally went to my boss after they were all done. And I was like, so why are we doing this? And he's like, we saved a hundred thousand dollars this month. <laughs> That's why. And I'm like, what? And it wasn't from our budget. It's from the, the company's budget. But apparently, because of the new service that we're using, it's saving the company over $1 million a year. So I was yeah, like... I believe it. So I was like, oh, so the little over $1,000 in overtime and the $1,000 like expense payment, not even a blip in their radar. He's like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, what I'm mad about is we're not getting a bonus from that. Oh yeah, fucking a. Yeah. Hopefully it uh, looks good in your review this year. Yeah, yeah, I think that that will look that'll look pretty good. I I also had to do extra ones because my coworker got sick, and so there were a, a couple of clinics he was gonna go to that they're like, oh, so uh, now you have to do that, Reeton. And I was like, oh, oh they don't call me Reeton, but you know, uh, they're like, now you have to do those. So I did a couple more clinics that were literally like. 150 miles away from me that I had to go and do. So it was just it was a lot of driving, but it's okay. And then my the one last thing I want to complain about a little bit is uh, we only had one phone to install in one of the clinics. And my boss was like, okay, I don't care about that clinic. Go do these other clinics. They're more important. And I was like, but what about the ops that need to get installed? What about the two computers that need to be replaced? And then he's like, shit. Yeah, you got to go to that clinic too. <laughs> no. And I was, like, I was like, don't worry. I hate myself. I hate I, myself too. I get like specifically with our field. It's like if shit doesn't yeah. work, stuff's going to come to a grinding halt. And unfortunately, that stuff is like, well, I had one time off for the next six months, and this was it. So, thanks. Yeah. So it's uh, it's fine. Stuff happened. Uh, but I, it just meant I haven't been able to play any video games in the last month, basically. Uh, you know, a little bit here and there, but nothing, nothing spectacular. Anyway, 
we are going to get into some news stories. Uh, and the first news story we are going to talk about uh, was one that was actually at the beginning of last month. Um, students scramble after security breach wipes 13,000 devices. This is from Ars Technica. Um, this, is from a, this is from Singapore. Uh, students in Singapore are scrambling after a security breach wiped notes and all of their data from school-issued iPads and Chromebooks running the mobile device management app Mobile Guardian. According to news reports, the mass wiping came as a shock to multiple students in Singapore, where the Mobile Guardian app has been the country's official mobile device management provider for public schools since 2020. The Ministry of Education said on Monday that roughly 13,000 students from 26 secondary schools had their devices wiped remotely in the incident. The agency said it will remove the Mobile Guardian from all iPads and Chromebooks uh, that it issues. Well, that's good, but uh, also really bad if that's like where you kept all your like essays and stuff. Yeah. A part of me is thinking, oh, what kind of person would use their mobile device for that? And then another part of me is thinking, well, if they don't have a cloud, what are the odds they're carrying like a flash drive around when they got their phone? Like, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, no, this actually could be the case. Well, and, and so I worked at a place that used uh, mobile device management. And I don't know, you got, do you guys have like work phones? No. No. Okay. I've worked at places that have had work phones, though. Okay, so I, I have a work phone. And my boss has told me, hey, if you want, you can use, like, we'll reimburse you. I think it's like no. 50 bucks a month or something like that. Immediate answer is no. Yeah, yeah. We'll reimburse you if you want to use your personal phone and have No, like, you're not accidentally them. wiping my phone. It, well, we don't have mobile device management uh, at, at my, my current job uh, because we have so few people that actually have work phones. But. Interesting. Um, I told him no. I I prefer having two phones because that way I can be like, hey, I'm on vacation and I'll just leave my work phone at home. And like I'm like my boss has my number. If he really needs to get a hold of me, he can text my personal phone. Um, but I worked at a place that did have mobile device management, and every time I would have this conversation. They would, I would be like, okay, so you can either, we can either get you a, a, a work phone or you can use your personal phone. And the person would say, oh, I, I just, I don't want to have two phones. And I'm like, okay, just so you know, if we do that, then we will take control of your device and we can wipe it remotely whenever we feel like it. Or it can accidentally get wiped at some point. And they're like, mm -hmm. you know what? I think I'll take a work phone. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so... Yeah, that's basically what happened here, but with iPads and uh, Chromebooks. And I understand, yeah, keeping like essays and stuff on your iPad, maybe not the greatest, but keeping essays on a Chromebook, that kind of makes sense. Uh, but wouldn't those typically be saved to the Google Cloud unless they had their own? Well, if this is all being done, it, so if, if this is all being done, like th these are devices that are owned by the school or whatever, like, yeah, you would think that they would use like a G Suite or whatever the yeah. hell it's called now. Uh, I think it might actually just be like apps for business or something, like Google Apps for business or something. But uh, maybe they don't. Maybe they don't pay for it. Yep. Yeah, uh, it looks like there was an uh, image. If you click on the link in the bottom, uh, of we've we've I've seen uh, Connor post images like this from his work, uh, where it's just a bunch of iPads and Chromebooks sitting on a table waiting to be wiped, <laughs> so that way they can like the IT team can go and uh, like re re image all of those machines, and I've seen like Connor have like 30 iPhones, all of them updating at once mm -hmm. while he's just like, this is what I'm doing for my afternoon today. Yep. Just I'm doing all I'm up. To, that's what I do. Uh, last Thursday I had to go in and image 59 computers in one day. That's uh, every single time we get a major update. I'm talking specifically for my mobile management team, but like, oh yeah, and we're we're gonna push out an update. I'm like, and it's gonna be a no touch update, right? 
<laughs> uh, well, you see, uh, is there, uh, yeah, who, who's going to touch those devices? Greg. His name's not Greg. I'm just being, you know, uh, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, God damn it. I hate when that's the case. And uh, mobile management platforms can sometimes help with that. But even then, honestly, they usually end up being a, a pain in the butt. Or, you know, they, they wipe all of your data and you can't ever get it back ever. Well, uh, one thing that happened um, while I was gone, thankfully, nobody contacted me. Uh, Because I was in Australia, so it's not like I could have helped anyway. Uh, But the InfoSec team decided that everyone required two-factor authentication and didn't tell the IT team what the fuck was going on. (laughs) So everything, like, uh, my teammate was was like, yeah, I took like 38 tickets that day or something like that. I was like, yep, I've been there. I've been there when, like, InfoSec makes a change without telling everyone, and then it's just like... Hey, we have to we have to do all these updates and and get everyone on this. And there were other things, but the apparently the good thing about that happening is now InfoSec is allowing us to reset two-factor authentications. They have given us that permission now, which is really awesome because I had before you would have to go to the InfoSec team and be like, "Hey, can you can you reset the octa for this person? And then they wouldn't read that message for like three hours. And you, then you'd, <laughs> you'd have to message them again and be like, hey, fucking do this. And they'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, here we go. It's great. It's awesome. Um, we're going to move on to our next story. Um, have you? Uh, here's another question for you guys. Have you guys ever had any really long hiring processes? Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, like I've had ones where like when I first got it, like when I first got out of college, I applied at a place and like I would apply for the job. They'd be like, hey, we received your application. And then a month later, they'd be like, we want to bring you in for an interview. And then like a month and a half later, they'd be like, we want to bring you in for another interview. Uh, well, it looks like Infosys from India um, just never hired people. They would just keep stringing people along. Uh, This is from TechSpot. It says, InfoSec, an Indian tech giant with a market cap of nearly $100 billion, has allegedly been stringing along thousands of recent engineering graduates for years after extending job offers. Not only... Not only are they not hiring them, they are hired. They're, like, giving them the job offers and then never actually starting them. Um, it says the allegations filed with the Ministry of Labor and Employment in a letter by the labor group Nascent Information Technology Employees Senate um, paint an unsavory picture written by group president Har- Harpreet Singh Saluja. The complaint states that over 2,000 graduates recruited for engineering roles have been left in hiring limbo for nearly two years despite receiving offer letters as early as April 2022, which is just just great. But why? Like, were they getting some kind of government benefit for having these jobs but didn't want to actually have to pay them? I have no idea. That's kind of what I'm thinking, but I'm not positive. Like... There's got to be something that makes it make sense, right? And I'm definitely not seeing anything that makes this make sense. Yeah, it says uh, Parik did, did not address the reason behind the delay. He's like the president or something. Logistical issues are speculated as a possibility, though previous delays due to COVID-19 are no longer, th- those don't seem to apply. Um, it says that they would they would like just keep moving their start date back. Uh, and the despite... Uh, successfully completing the pre-training, the promised results were never communicated, leaving the graduates in limbo for over 20 days. To their shock, instead of receiving their joining dates, they were informed that they needed to retake the pre-training exam offline once again without any remuneration. So they, they had to take all this training without getting paid for it. That sucks. That's not good. Um, That's a, especially shitty in a place like India where like you know that they're fucking desperate as hell for a job. Oh yeah, and then you 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 get like you know scammers and stuff. This is how you get them to like start being like, well, I I need to make money. Let's go to this place where I guess I'm gonna start scamming people. 
Um, it says these young engineering graduates are integral to the future of our nation's IT industry. By delaying their careers and subjecting them to unpaid work and repeated assignments, emphasis uh, not only wasting their valuable time, but also undermining the contributions they could be making to India's growth. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I had uh, like over six hours of interviews once, not paid. And that was pretty bad. I was going to say, that's a lot of interviews. Yeah. Like, how many interviews was that? If I have an interview going longer than three hours, I'm starting to be like, all right, what the fuck's going on? That was like six different interviews. That they sucks. just so at Facebook to be a full time employee, um, I had to do I think I think it was five or six interviews, but it, it ended up being like, all right, let's interviews forty five minutes and you get half an hour between, and then you get another forty five minute interview and another fifteen or twenty minutes between, like so it ended up being over six hours, just it's sitting not like, there. Like I know IT is solutions engineering or whatever, but it's not like you're doing actual like problem solving in your role there like you're, you're kind of solve you're following the guidelines for their support like yeah I well mean, you're doing what this, systems engineering tells you to do so the the way that facebook works is that the if you're basic it like we would be technically um you're a contractor and the full-time employee is your supervisor so the super i was applying for the more supervisory role Gotcha. Okay, Where that makes a little more sense. I would be, I would have been doing IT work and helping them with that, but also managing like three or four of the contractors and making sure that they were hitting their numbers. Um, but like I, I, I did not get that job, obviously, and they called me back, and the recruiter was like, I can't go into too much detail, but uh he's like you you did really well in your technical interviews the two technical interviews that you had with like troubleshooting and stuff uh, but, but then you, your autism came out no it was but then you wouldn't stop talking about wrestling for the entirety of the third <laughs> interview uh no it was um i forget what it was called it was like the partnership interview where like it's it's how well you work with other people and apparently you the... said that the last time you had to work on a team that you, uh, quote, punched the other guy so hard that he died. No, so it, no. I don't think they liked that very much. Yeah. And what sucks is you have like five or six people that you talk to for different like interviews. And if one of them doesn't like you, you don't get the job. Yes. Yeah. Which is just like okay, cool, and well, you, nope, you're nobody about got that a job. Super hyper elitist Silicon Valley job, like yeah, yeah. Uh, nobody ended up getting that job, by the way, because I <laughs> I ended up getting hired on as a contractor because they couldn't find a full time employee for that job. You're like, I'm gonna I'm a full time employee for this job, and like, hmm, we just can't find someone who's up to the cut. But uh, you could do our other shit for us. Yeah, basically. And then while I was there. Uh, they put that full-time job back on there and I applied for it for both Oregon and Iowa. Like I was like, I'll fucking take a job in Iowa if it's going to pay me like 80 grand a year. Fuck and yeah. Um, yeah, they, they didn't even interview me for it while I was working there. Like while I was already doing the job and doing amazingly well at the job, which really pissed me off. But, um hopefully infosys uh either gets like i don't know what, what like they could be fined for this hopefully for but i i don't know what india's laws are like i know in the united states they would just be like well it's work at will like we we don't have to we don't have to hire um, you i india India tends to be one of those countries where they have laws in place to deal with this sort of thing, but their enforcement of them is kind of lacking. So as long as they as they find out about it, they tend to at least make some kind of effort. Yeah. But it, obviously the country is very lopsided in terms of its uh where its money distribution is and the government isn't even on the good side of that. So 
it, it also says here, the last paragraph, it says Infosys revealed in its quarter one 2024 earnings call that it plans to hire 15,000 to 20,000 freshers this year. I assume that means like new hires. So there's really no reason to keep recruits in limbo. Uh, at my job, they, they, they wanted to hire like one or two more people, whether it be uh, like a local person or two remote people um, for, for some help. And then uh, that's not happening this year. That's okay. so weird. Uh, oh, you guys are saving like a million bucks. Uh, yeah, we're saving a million bucks, but we're also uh, losing a lot of money because uh yeah. because of changes to medicare. Yeah. Yeah, our yeah. uh my my company is also having a similar problem due to government things. But that also means that uh we only have four IT people for uh 53 clinics across uh where I live. So I do not think I will be getting uh I I don't think I'll be losing my job here anytime soon. Which is nice. No. You just, you won't get that bonus. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, this year my bonus was amazing. It was like five thousand dollars. Nice. Yeah. Uh, next year. We were year, already warned our our bonuses aren't going to be that good this year. So. Yeah, Yikes. I, I wasn't warned about it, but we were in a call where they explained how much the uh, the new enrolls, like the enrollments, have fallen, and what they projected and how much we actually lost. And I was like, oh, yeah, my, I'm not getting a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> my bonus is gone. Um, but I, I also know some other people who aren't getting a bonus, and that's the people who made Concord. Yeah. That's, uh, God, that's, that's just an unfortunate story. Like, every time I hear more about this, it's like, huh, oh, that, that got, like, a room full of people to say, yes, this is a good idea. Huh. It, it doesn't look bad. Like, it looks fine as a game. It just doesn't look new. It is like, remarkably mid as far yeah. as I can tell. It I don't know why they priced it at forty dollars. I Sony's been doing that lately. Uh, Helldivers was forty bucks. Yeah, but Helldivers was good. Like uh, apparently it's because it's, it's a live service game, so they figured they'd make it you know, they, they they could still make a lot of money off of it anyway. Well, yeah, and well, my, my problem with Concord is I think it should have been free-to-play because all the other hero shooters that are coming out are free-to-play. Oh, I see what you're saying. If, I thought if, you were... No, no, I wasn't... I was saying that it was, it was too much money. Maybe $20 with some microtransactions. Oh. But they should have made it free-to-play, and that probably would have helped them actually get people to play it because you have... If you don't know what Concord is... Concord is, it's a hero shooter, much like Overwatch or, uh, Overwatch. Overwatch. <laughs> There's a couple other ones, but I can't think of it. Like, uh, what was it? Paragon? Paladin? Apex no, that was a MOBA. Predators. Oh, okay. Yeah, whatever. There's, there's other games. Paragon uh, was a MOBA. Predecessor is a MOBA that is literally Paragon, but under a different name. Uh, there's, there's that, uh, Gundam one. There's a Gundam one that, it that died. is Overwatch. It died. Aww. Oh, is it I was dead? kind of excited yeah. for that one. Yeah, it was... It was uh, 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 Durga and I played it, uh, and it was pretty okay, and it's dead. Yeah, I knew, I knew multiple people who enjoyed their time with it. That's... Huh. Yep. Uh, there, was a, there was that Capcom one. I... Uh, where I, there were dinosaurs. You fought dinosaurs. That Exo Primal? Yeah. That wasn't really a hero shooter. No. Th not not so much. No. Um that was that was like that was more of a wave based shooter. And you were you were uh, competing okay. you were competing with another team, but you didn't really like kill them so much. Okay, like, yeah. so it's like it just has to straight up be Team Fortress 2 or else it's not a hero shooter. No, I'm I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it wasn't, it's not really what, it, what I'm, def like you said, oh, well, Paragon's a MOBA, but it was, a, well, it, it, it was, it was a hero shooter as well. Nah, it's just a MOBA. <laughs> sure. It's like, sure. Uh, it's like Deadlock, which is just a MOBA and also unbelievably boring. Oh, have you played it? I haven't played it yet. Yeah. Um, and then there's, uh, they're coming out with a, a new Marvel one, Marvel Rivals. 
which is going to be a hero shooter, much like Overwatch. And <laughs> no one's going to play that either. No one's going to play that. That's I, Durga's going to play it because he loves Marvel. It'll be a live service game. Every month you could get a different color for your Iron Man. Exactly. <laughs> um, but Concord is a bigger failure than the Reaton Entertainment podcast. Uh, and because it sold twenty-five, yeah, it sold twenty-five thousand copies. Now you might think you might look over all of Reaton Entertainment and say, "Hey, you only have like three thousand listens over four hundred episodes," but I didn't pump eighty million dollars into this. <laughs> so, <laughs> jokes on we did you. The cost best benefit analysis, and it turns out Reaton Entertainment is not the biggest co- sunken cost you could invest in. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, that sentence didn't want to come out. You know, I, I mean. we know what you mean. Uh, We're not the biggest sunken fallacy in all of the cost. This is from Eurogamer. Uh, it, says, it, it does say Concord is estimated to have sold twenty five thousand copies. Um, <laughs> God, according that's to, insane. According to IGN analyst Simon Carlos, uh, estimates that Concord sales equate to around ten thousand units on Steam and fifteen thousand on PlayStation. Uh, while we can't track real-time player numbers on PlayStation, right now there are 71 players on Steam. <laughs> and the <laughs> highest concurrent player count in 24 hours is 151. God damn. But, uh, but, but Nathan, that's just Steam. That doesn't show all the numbers. No, but it sure is a big chunk, ain't it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Concord ranked 147th. 147th. In the United States, PlayStation 5 daily active players on all titles with fewer than 0.2% of Monday's active PS5 players playing the game. <laughs> uh, so it, 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 like, it looks fine. I, I looked uh, at it and I, I've watched reviews and people have said, hey, like, this game plays well. The shooting is, is fun, but there's just nothing to it. And... Yeah, and my understanding is that it's kind of a it's kind of a Wukong situation, but backwards. Uh, Wukong, where is people Wu- is Wukong doing well? So, it's doing yes. incredibly well. But some might say because of China. Oh, I yes. See. Um, but it like there are definitely a number of people who bought Wukong specifically because of it trying to appeal to the anti-woke crowd uh at least the developers trying to appeal to that crowd and i i think that the the public image of concord has kind of been sullied by this attempt at appropriating social movements as a way of making their game more appealing i see i see because they they just kind of made a bunch of stereotypical divergent characters without like really giving them any kind of personality outside of a a parody of a Tumblr user. Oh, I see. Sort of that thing. Was an, there was another game a few years ago that was another first person shooter that was kind of like they just tried to make all of their people like trendy and cool. And it just didn't work. That was the vampire yeah. one, right? There's a lot of them, but yeah, yes. I, I, how little that narrows it down. Yeah, um, uh, and the developers themselves supposedly, like on social media, were being like, "Like the game's not successful because of bigots and and shit." And it's like, guys, this is not. You're not helping yeah. by doing this. No, no, you're not. Like you. you Anytime you come out and try to defend it in a way like that, just isn't going to work. How no. do you say that and not sound like you're angry? Yeah. Um, it does say here, and I, it, one of these quotes is um, something I agree with. It says, Concord should have been launched free to play or at least part of the PlayStation Plus subscription to have a fighting chance in its overcrowded genre. It is not too late for this to happen, of course, but the damage might have already been done. First impressions matter. And yeah, yeah, like so. my 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 thought is that's probably what's going to happen is they're probably going to make it free to play after a certain amount of time. Uh, the player count's not going to go up, and then they're going to shutter it in a year. I it'll it'll 
do what the, what always happens where it, it shoots up by like you know 50 percent at most yeah which will give it a grand total of, of 300 players or so and yeah i agree that it'll it'll die very shortly after that yeah i mean and and i was i'm not very excited for the game but i was like oh that looks fine i might pick it up when it goes on sale but apparently not <laughs> um I, I just i think it's it's where it's where the that genre has been for quite a while now where the market's just way too fucking saturated with games like that not necessarily hero shooters but just the live service i hate setup it. i'm done it, with where live service it, yeah I, I i really do think that like the the market is kind of tired of that i would and... be very curious to see which ones are considered successful like not successful in that they're making money because like any game can find its whale and you know you could find that you can get the studio lights turned down for another month just off them but like the ones that are actually doing cool shit with it i um... it, and i assume i i would assume that you would agree that hell divers at least yep. is is doing a decent job of that in in terms of innovation not necessarily being successful because of some of the recent things that have happened with the game but yeah there's so, a there's a devil on my shoulder definitely but all things considered i think they are top of the list and they're not being innovative they're just like yeah we made a new weapon and oops it broke the game again yeah. but like they're taking risks so they're, they're making a public beta server which is really what something like this should be doing but that that's a yeah. we could do a whole podcast talking yeah. about that alone so we've got uh we got hell divers 2 uh fortnite Technically, a live service game. Yeah, Fortnite's definitely. I, okay, no, I, I changed my answer. They're definitely number one. Yeah, Roblox, CS:GO, some Call of Duty games, like Warzone. I, I, think. I would CSGO? say live action. Uh, we don't need to talk about this. Uh, I, yeah, C CS, CS:GO is. I would. I would argue, in, in the definition, uh, the market definition of what a live service game is. Yes, I would say that it is a live service game because you, you get the base experience. Even though it it's free now, right? Isn't yeah, it? yeah. Counter Strike Two. Counter Strike CSGO, Two. I think you still have to pay for. Well, CS:GO doesn't exist anymore. It is Counter Strike Two. Oh really? Uh, yeah, it got yeah. upgraded. Uh, quote unquote upgraded. Um, but it, it then beyond that, if you want like cosmetics and shit, you pay money for them, and like the game is updated over time without you having to pay for it. Like, yeah. Uh, same to a much lesser degree uh with tf2 um mm -hmm. and, but i i would say the the two uh, like main successful mmos being world of warcraft and final fantasy 14 both of those are definitely live service games yeah okay i wasn't even considering them but no you're right those are definitely examples of successful products well yeah because you i mean i i would I would push back a little bit on that because you don't really get all the content for free. But I mean, Final Fantasy, well, Final Fantasy fourteen has a really good uh, free to play, free trial, free trial. Yeah, it's not uh, like they're not bringing in the free accounts like in World of Warcraft either. It's just, yes, you're, I definitely agree that the Final Fantasy one's more fair, but I think they both qualify. Yeah, Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, don't you have RuneScape. to? Do you have to pay for ESO though? You yeah. do not. I mean, oh, you okay. Don't. Okay. So uh, ESO works in that you can play most of the game for free. Uh, uh, you have to buy the expansions or you can pay a subscription. Kind of like Guild Wars and then and Neverwinter, you, I think. Yeah. You get a bunch of, you get a bunch of free pre, well, you know, free premium currency whenever you pay the monthly subscription. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it is a lot like uh, Guild Wars. Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess there are some a lot of light service games, but they just keep they keep trying Warframe. Yeah, they keep trying to push these <laughs> these light service Planet games side. that are like Concord that just aren't working. Like in the last couple of years, you had uh, what was the the Marvel game that came out? Marvel yeah. whatever's that was really bad. <laughs> That they wanted to push well, as a live service game, and then just like it died immediately. Uh, that that EA one that was an absolute joke that Bioware made. 
Yeah. Um, that I can't even remember the fucking name of anymore, even yeah. though it was a, it was a joke. Uh, um, Anthem. Yes, that, that it? was it. Yeah. Oh yeah, Anthem. Yeah, that's the one. I um, I I don't even think that that it's like it it, it doesn't even matter whether or not you put out a good one now unless you're doing something like radically different it's just that there are so many of these games that there there's one already out there for most major niches and you're you're not gonna be able to because like outside of needing people to constantly put money into a live service game you you need to have people with time to play the live service game. Yeah. And, and when you have so many, like that's part of the yeah, problem it, with MMOs in general. Yeah. Um, Cause you had like, like you, I'm sorry, you had people like playing world of Warcraft and then they would be like, all right, we released a new MMO and people would move from world of Warcraft to the new MMO for a month. And then they'd go back to world of Warcraft. Yeah, uh, uh, case in point, uh, Final Fantasy fourteen. I really like Final Fantasy fourteen, but there is no goddamn way that I could possibly play two MMOs at the same time. Like, I and, just do not have time. And you can't get your your family to switch. That too. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, because like, yeah, we'd have to just drop WoW and mm -hmm. exclusively play. Final Fantasy fourteen. Well, I, I like, had a friend. I had a friend that um, this was, man. Wow, it's been out for so long. This is over a decade ago. Uh, he had a girlfriend that they played World of Warcraft together, and I think Final Fantasy or some other game. I think it might have been Star Wars uh, was coming out, and he was like, "Oh, we could try playing that." And she's just like, "No, I'm not playing any other MMO ever because it won't be as good as WoW." That, and that would she, she just hard line said she would never play any other MMO. So he had no choice but to play WoW with her. And yeah. they, they've since broken up. But uh, so there's another long story. But I just remember that vividly. Like, you're, you won't even give any other game a chance. Which is, again, like, if people are already playing Overwatch and they look at something like Concord and they say... It looks like Overwatch. I'm just gonna keep playing Overwatch. Yeah. Uh, which, which I'm, I, I mean, it makes sense. You get that, and you also get that sunk cost fallacy, where you say, "I've spent much so, so much time. I've spent so much time getting gear in World of Warcraft. I don't want to start over in Final Fantasy 14." And, and even it's... though every time there's an update, your gear needs to get refreshed, anyways. But I know what well, you mean. It's like collectibles yeah, yeah. and cosmetics. Well, yeah, that, like that's that. why that's why they put so much emphasis on like pets and mounts and that kind of shit because they know they know that it's all it's all about like being able to show off the stuff that that other people can't have or don't want to put in the effort to get. Like, yeah, and, well, and and it's like like. The I I am actually having the problem right now where I do not know how to split my time between playing World of Warcraft and for one any other game, but primarily is Endless Zone Zero, which I love. I love that game. Both are live service games, though. Ultimately, like, and I it there Endless Zone Zero has a bunch of limited time events. That's how they've structured the game because they know from making Genshin Impact that that brings people in. You you have you just have periodic live events or, or, or that only last for like 10 days. So you have to get in, you have to do all the shit so that you can get the rewards that are exclusive to that event. And, and like, if you don't, you just miss out forever. Or at least until like next year, probably. Yeah. Like, and I, I just, I only have so many hours in my day. And uh, quit your job. Yeah. Like it's it's kind of like almost to the point where I, I would have to like have my work computer at my desk and then like be playing a game while like just waiting for something to happen and then switch back and forth as, as I'm as I'm working. 
I, I know you're jokingly referencing that. I know a lot, like like more than ten people who's that's how they live their life. Yeah, it's not <laughs> happy existences. I I won't say that, but man, like if that's the dream, you could do it, and that will it, be your life. At some point, though, it's it starts to feel like a a job. A, like, a, a, well, a job and or like being a junkie in a way. Like <laughs> that's exactly what it is, Aro. We all care and love about you, and we want you to get better. Uh, and this is it. This is the taste of realization. The the momentary lapse before finalization of, oh no, what have I done to myself? <laughs> yeah, like I've seen like I've seen people who take spend hours setting up the ability to run like four or five different characters on the same computer for EverQuest. And they will like oh. they will spend time like writing macros for every one of their characters. So that way they don't have to like get parties and they can just like go through the content without having to worry about having other people to help them. So there, there's definitely people that will do stuff like that. Uh, I, I'm not one of them. I'm not one of those people. The multi boxers are fucking insane. And I have, uh, I won't say nothing but respect for them, but I do have some level of respect for them. <laughs> I yeah I mean they they they're doing what they love and they they make it work and it's impressive it is uh but I'll never do it because yeah it's it's also like it's, it's impressive it's impressive the, the, it, yeah I guess that's exactly what I was gonna say there in the, <laughs> the how depraved can we get with ourselves here yeah. I like video games obviously like if you're listening to this podcast you do too but I do hit a point where it's like okay anything else now. Yeah, anything else would be anything else would be fun. Uh but anyway, uh we're we're done with our you think we would have had more stories to talk about since we haven't been here for a month, but I looked over stories and not a lot has happened in August. We could, we could talk we about more stuff, but like it's it's nothing that's worth bringing up. There yeah, was... and also like I don't really feel like talking for 3 hours. Yeah, didn't you know? Gamescom happen? While well, I was there was like uh, a Nintendo yeah. Direct and I just God, how the mighty have fallen. I cannot be bothered to even like look into what they talked oh, about it, during it. It's okay. It was just them announcing that they opened a museum. Oh, yeah. okay, good. They sure did. Good. Anyway, uh, we'll be back next week again. Actually, actually back. I want to thank you for being here, Connor. Yep, I'm actually going to go right now. Goodbye. Bye. I want to thank you for being here, Oroa. I'm not going to go right now, but yeah, I'm glad I was here. And uh, we'll be we'll be back next week. Goodbye. Bye bye.